commissioners as well as refreshing to, to the community also. So we were able to accomplish that. I think that that went very well. And now we're at the point that we want to start putting some structure together to this uh, from our solid waste standpoint to kind of see if, uh, if we can get closer to making, uh, making some changes in that process that hopefully will be a benefit certainly to the citizens of our county. Um, in front of you, I think that everybody should have a copy of this um, just from a standpoint of a place to start. I put some ideas down, uh, submitted them to you. I can kind of go through this and then we can, you know, then we can come back on, on the specific items and then we can start some discussion there as, uh, as far as what your thoughts are and what you think that solid waste needs to look. Uh, look like here in Lambs County. And then certainly keep in mind that again, we're here because advanced disposal um, has requested an increase in the current $12.80 rate. Uh, and in that process, for that, for that increase, they are willing to look at some concessions. So what we need to do is come up with what we feel like it needs how it needs to look. We're going to then need to formulate that into uh, into a, a, a form that we can letter form that we can get to advanced disposal, and so that they can then submit us back a price on what it would take to provide those services. Uh, so we're going to move forward. If anybody doesn't have any questions, okay. Initially, in this I'd like to clarify what I what I've kind of put together here really. I term this as a short-term solution. I don't see this as a long-term solution. I still say that there's a good bit of discussion that's got to take place uh, as we move move forward on solid waste in Lambs County, but I think to be able to sort of meet the deadline, or not the deadline, but the, 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 the March 1st date where we'd like to get to as far as a goal to be able to have something in place, I think we're going to have to kind of do it in a short-term solution and then move on from there. Um, I think, uh, of course, as, as we discussed, Lowndes County wants to add additional hauling. That's one concession. I think uh, the question's been out there, uh, curbside services currently, how that would look as far as uh, that picture. Um, and then collection centers for the community, uh, how many collection centers, where they may be located, possibly. <clears throat> I think that is something that we would need to look at. And then um, also some pertinent information in between as far as how those sort of things could take place. Um, let me just kind of start out with uh, curbside service as far as I think right now it's extremely important for the citizens of Lambs County that we have curbside service. Uh, number one, curbside service for household guards. That's the number one service that should be provided uh, outside of everything. <clears throat> I think also you're going to find some citizens um, that, are, that are comfortable and like curbside pickup as well for yard trimmings and the bulk items um, and recycling. I think that's something that we'll have to have some discussion with and maybe um, once we get there, advanced disposal might be able to provide us with some data that gives us an idea of how much of that type of business that they're doing actually picking up at the curbside for yard degree and bulk items. Um, Deep South as well has stated at the other meeting that they also do curbside pickup for yard debris uh, and bulk items, but they do it on a, let's say, a per diem basis. When they get the call, they go out there and they pick it up. Um, they also might be able to provide some data that says how much of that service is, is required in the county, where, where, where that's at. Um, I think uh, once we, we can get that information, then we can kind of address uh, the curbside issue. Of, again, number one is curbside for household cars. Uh, and then how we want that to look from there. Do we want 
curbside pickup for everything? Do we want curbside pickup for just household garbage? And then if we move to the collection centers and are able to op open up additional collection centers, then do we just want to, ex to accept that those collection centers, yard debris, bulk items, and recycle at the collection centers? I think that's one picture that you might take up. Can I ask, can I ask you to ask a question? Uh, yeah, be fine. How many other markets do y'all have? Any other markets y'all have that have collection centers? Well, is it um, some, it's some, of, some do, some don't. Kind of it's kind of even split. Kind of even split. Um, I think maybe uh, Green County um, has community centers. They have to have curbside garbage only at the curb. Everybody else brings the recycling yard waste and bulk to those two or three community centers that Green County has. So it's kind of a split. Um, typically, um, more rural the area, the more likely you're, you see the <coughs> first, the more urban, you like more likely to see the, the service all occur. Yeah. Is that working good at Green? And yes, sir, it is. No Especially with the recycling market the way it is now, it's working real well. Okay. All right. Um, so I think that that's going to be some discussion there to see how we would like for that to look. And then on the collection centers, I know personally from my conversations that I've had with citizens uh, that has contacted me, um, there still is a need for the collection centers. Um, and so I think that that's definitely something that we're going to need to consider is that if we want to move back into that area, again, I want to make this real clear. Lowndes County does not want to be in the trash business. Does not want to be in the trash business. Can Lowndes County be in the trash business? Yes, Lowndes County can be in the trash business. And if that's where we end up at the end of the day, that's what, we, you know, that's what we've got to consider long term down the road. We certainly would like to be able to, to work with our current franchisees, current haulers that we have in our community to be able to provide the services and provide the services efficient, efficiently and, and in a manner uh, that we don't feel like as a county and as a commission that we've got to step in and take it up. So well, that's, that's my opinion of that and that's where we're at at, that at this time, so I just want to get that out there. Um, but I do believe uh, the collection centers are important to some I think once you open them up, I think then as the time moves moves along, there will be some decisions that will have to be made about collection centers, about are they as popular as some folks seem to think they are. Um, if, um, if you go to, the, to a uh, collection center and there's a line out the street and everybody's trying to get in there to get stuff in there, then you have to assume they're popular, you know, there. But if you go there and the and the guy that's uh, the tent the attendant there and uh, you know he just said, I ain't done nothing all day, then you got to figure out what you're doing with collection centers. And I'm sure that the providers, operators will be able to provide us again with information to us support on that. But that's again looking into the long term. Steve, yes, sir. your Green County collection centers, are they open every day or they um, certain days of the week, hours? I believe it's mostly just weekends, sir. I'm pretty sure it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I think it's, uh, I think it's like 8 to 5, I believe. And Sunday might be a little bit more extended hours. I, also, um, I, I had a, just an idea slash suggestion. Uh, I think for the collection sites to be successful, uh, it would be a good idea for the franchise to to provide the you know, collection site service for free. And if uh, someone's not a member uh, of that franchise uh, you know, company, of course, they have to pay another fee. And that fee possibly might be higher, of course, a, a little bit because at the end of the day, we're trying to discourage illegal dumping too, uh, which I work around and spotted a lot of stuff like that, too. Uh, and I'll let you, I'd just like to say, I think that the chairman has been on point everything thus far. Uh, I know my feelings are towards everything. Uh, so let's move on. Good. My question is that uh, in Green County, mm -hmm. so the one that already went to the uh, curbside, is there an extra fee when you go to the collections? Green County is voted 
different in that there's one franchise hauler, and then there's one franchise hauler that takes care of the collection centers. So there's not multiple companies, there's only one. But certainly y'all can do however you want to do it. Um, I want to come back to, as y'all recall, in some earlier discussions that we've talked about, we have narrowed it down on four of the most important things that we feel like that we want to consider with solid waste in, in, in Lowndes County. And of course, for the most part, the way it come out is that number one concern is choice. Uh, choice can be looked at several different ways or a couple of different ways at least. Choice can be looked at from the standpoint of choice of who my provider is. It could be choice of me taking my yard debris and bulk items to a collection center or we're having them pick it up at the curb. That could be considered choice as well. But it, I think it was pretty clear that choice um, was number one. Um, number two was convenience. Convenience, is that correct? Oh, cost, gotcha, okay, cost. Then certainly cost is drives everything, so that, that's key there. Then you have convenience, that was number three, and then our fourth thing that we had was accountability. Uh, again, as a commission, and the reason why we're here, we have a level of accountability to make sure that the citizens of Lowndes County is getting the service that they need and that they deserve. That's the four most important things that we, that's come out of this that we are here for. So, let's, let's just kind of start Again, tackling these one at a time. Um, and if anybody's got a particular subject that we don't cover here that they feel like that needs to be addressed, and we get to the end, please make a note of it and then let me know, and we'll, we'll add it. But, you know, whatever we come up with here, we're going to have to then submit and get, get a quote on it. Um, that, uh, the exclusivity clause, uh, from, from that standpoint. Uh, is, is everybody in agreement here that we need a di an additional hall? Yeah. Yes. Or for, in Lambs County? That's been very excited to me to do both metal and email and so forth from my district. Yeah. 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 Ms. Evans? say right now let's uh, let's let's limit it to the question of whether or not we need more in other words if if we need additional haulers and the removal of the exclusive mm -hmm. yeah. 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 so I think everybody's in agreement with that that we can do that. Uh, curbside service uh, can we all agree that curbside service of household garbage is definitely a must we have to do that I mean, they, 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 it's, it's like crap. They've gotten a taste of it, and I don't want to go back. <laughs> That's just the honest truth. Joe, don't quote that. <laughs> <laughs> but the harsh reality, that, that, that's the honest truth. That's what I'm yeah. going to try to tell you. Okay. Now, let's, let's go here. Do you think also that it needs to be considered as an option that the customer can get curbside service of all services? Or is it just household garbage and then you move everything else to another option? I think as long as they have the option to get rid of those items somewhere, then if the curbside hauler will pick up the other things curbside, y'all be y'all be a price increase to the So that would be an individual charge. Uh, for example, if I had a refrigerator I wanted to get rid of, I would call uh, my provider and then my provider would say, I'll come pick it up for X. Or if you've got a customer that wants to yard trash pick up every other week. He can 
they pay so this, is, this is what the wedding call says to come. They, they can negotiate, negotiate that charge. So you really as long as they have that option of somewhere to go with the other three payments. Uh, yeah. They have a household bar which could come all. Then the other thing should be if the if the hauler wants to provide those as an option, they they should be able to provide that as an option. Because that gives the customer it goes back to our choice question. <clears throat> You know, we want to give them a choice of who they use. We also want to give them a choice of how their garbage is picked, you know, how the solid waste is picked up. Right. So I think that gives them more options, and that's one of our core goals. I guess, I guess if, if, if you look at it from, and not that I should be looking at it from the uh, franchisee standpoint, but I, I know it possibly would be easier for them if they got it from the house and then got another type of product at collection center um, and, and thereby can possibly benefit off of recyclables because you can do recyclables at the centers as well as the other items. Uh, but that's just my thoughts out there. If you want to help contain your calls, options. So, I, so I, I think the, the franchisee needs to be able to decide they want to offer those options. Because the, the big problem that they had, or one of the problems they had was the mixture of, of, of the trash with this recyclables and everything else as it was. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, they've been having a problem on recyclables with contaminated recyclables, but I, 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 I'm, I'm hearing what Mr. Griner is saying and simply the customer needs the option as well as the franchisee needs um, the flexibility of charging a, an additional charge to go and pick up yard debris, bulk items, and recyclables at the curb center. Uh, have we asked? Have you asked him what they, what they thought? Uh, any uh, possible franchise? The ADS? What do you think? Like? Steve, uh, what do you think? Um, I, mean, I, I kind of agree with Mr. Clay on some of it. Um, we're in Lamb County. Um, the, uh, the residents have a certain level of service, but if they want more service, they call in and ask for that purpose. They pay for it right then over the phone. That mostly goes with old waste and uh, yard waste. Um, recycling, I think if, if the county's looking long term, I don't know how sustainable the recycling market is going to be in the near future, especially with the amount of contamination that we're seeing occur. My opinion is, is that recycle should probably go to the convenience centers if you go that route. Because again, I'm thinking if y'all look long term, that's where I go. But the idea of additional pickups, that's that's normal. If somebody says I've got some yard waste, I've got some wood waste, what's well, an additional fifteen dollars or whatever the price is. Oh, they yard, yard waste and recycle is the only kind of bugaboo in your long term plan. Are those people that you said for bring this stuff? Are they build? Yes. Put the phone, we take a credit card and we'll come by your house this day. It's on, on the, uh, like Green County, when, when people go to that collection center. Green County, yeah, people go to that collection center. Do they pay <clears throat> uh, at that collection center? They do, yes. It's like per item. If you have a mattress, it's X amount. If you have a refrigerator, it's Y. Mr. Chairman, as a matter of information, I'm looking at Green County's website. I don't know that I'm particularly used to template for y'all because they do have um, this on a flat fee that is added to the tax bill that they do not uh, provide curbside recycling by the county that is at a different center and so forth. So there's a number of things there that I would yeah, I suggest to you that I haven't done any research on Green County at all, so I wouldn't be in favor of right now saying we're adopting any particular. No, no I just want to tell the others. I mean, y'all refer to it a couple of times. Yes, I've got okay. different things. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Mr. Scarborough, if I may, uh, the, other, the other night, the other morning in the meeting as well, you stated that your services that you provide to your customers are also on a per diem or per haul basis. A lot of yard debris or something, if they call me. And, and if I may, on the yard debris, I hear a lot of people. They would like somewhere to carry it to, 
but then at the same time, I have customers mm -hmm. that may hire a neighbor or someone to come over and cut up stuff or something. Mm -hmm. And they don't have a means to offer them. I would steal for those customers. I don't think they charge them a set amount. You know, okay. Well, that's the way I kind of understood what we were talking about. Bulky items as well? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Household garbage. That's, that's at the curbside. At the curbside, household garbage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're on a weekly schedule, committed schedule, mm -hmm. printed calendar, so that Mr. And Mrs. Homeowner knows when the when they need to roll their container out to the curb. That's right. going to be extremely important as well. All right. So what we'll be looking for there then is curbside for household garbage. Um, a rate as additional charge for uh, yard debris, bulk items, and recyclables at the curb. And I think one of the policies uh, Steve said as well as, uh, well, Terry does anyway, but he was saying uh, those disabled, uh, they, they go to the back door. Yeah. So, okay. All right. All right, then now, got that so then let's move on now to the convenience centers collection centers um, again as we said and we stated we think if we or I know I do and I think this you know this conversation that we've had uh, it's that the, the citizens want to go back to collections and at least have that as again as an option as a choice that if they choose to go there with their, with their yard debris with their bulk items and with their recyclables. That can be really bad. Um, if anyone had any comments about actually having a uh, collection center for household, anybody missed that to y'all? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I know. It's, 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 it's all been bulk items. I didn't leave that first. Uh, I, I think it's too. I just, I just wanted to see if anybody mentioned that. Anybody had any comments? I might have had one in an email that said that that's what they were doing previously, right. and they liked doing that compared to what they are doing now. Now they didn't necessarily say. Yeah. No. Like Marcus mentioned earlier, once these people get a taste of the terms of ABS for carrying coming to their house and getting it and all that, they love it. They don't want that. <clears throat> Most of them, I agree. Okay. But I think it's extremely important, at least as we move through short term, to begin to actually be able to clarify and to quantify the fact that folks do want these collection centers and that they will use these collection centers. Um, I feel like we need to see about it. Um, of course, again, from a convenience standpoint, you're really looking at at least three. Um, one in the south end of the county, one kind of centrally located, and one up toward the north end of the county. Uh, I don't think we need to get too deep right now into where these locations would be at. That's later for us to discuss, to discuss and I certainly believe that that ought to be the commissioner's choice as far as which one of the current convenience centers that have been closed down, which one of those that we would open up. There are issues with some and, is, and, and no issues with others, so we'd have to be uh, very, very conscious about choosing which collection center we open up, if we to choose to open up. So is, is it the opinion, again, of the commission that collection centers is something that we want to, to consider and move forward? Yeah. Definitely. Um, and, you know, don't get me wrong, that. I don't know how they're going to be able to to, uh, to do it uh, because when I think back to the cards, why, why they failed and everything else, uh, they might have to, that, that's well. I think again that that's going to be something that's going to be how that's done is going to be left up to the provider. Yeah, that's not going to be us because again I want to make it clear, Lowndes County, Lowndes County will not be operating the collection centers. This is not. But we, want to but we want to ensure that everybody knows it's a benefit to belong to one of the two franchisees because <coughs> I say you get to use it for free if you belong to the franchisee, but if you're another person coming out of the street, you possibly have to pay a fee. It's incentivized mm -hmm. uh, the use of ADS. Yeah. Or, uh, 
Okay. All right. So then we got a we got a yes definitely by the um, by the collection centers. Okay. Um, I think um, if this again this is one of those things that's not nearly as important, but I think to be able to give the provider some some direction. Um, I think we need to kind of at least have some minimal discussions about what our expectations would be as far as the times and the days that the collection centers that would be the best direction we want to be in that they would want to be open. Um, I, again, I'll throw, the, throw what I think out. I was thinking initially, certainly four days a week. Uh, my idea was more or less seven to seven, um, and that would be Thursday. I'm sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not necessarily Sunday. I would like to, I would like to add Monday in there because if you do that yard on Saturday, you might not have the energy to take it on to the thing. <laughs> you, know, you get it all together Saturday, Saturday evening, and then Monday you call it on. I thought Friday through Monday. Friday through Monday, Friday, so Friday then you would include Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, you got, you got Friday through Monday, okay. and then you got all weekend, that's when 90% of people do the yard on okay. the weekend. And if you do it on Wednesday, you can already reach the mile and take the price. Okay. So I think if you long as you use Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it would be Friday through Monday. I just try to get my money due done on Saturday. <laughs> rest on Sunday. Some of us are on Saturday. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, I, mean, and I don't have any, any, uh, any heartburn over either one of them. So uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, hours, we, we, we would like to have them consider that. I think he's already said 8 to 5. I don't know. In the summertime, 8 to 5 is kind of tight on the body in. Um, so um, I'm thinking seven to seven, eight to seven, <coughs> those sort of things, but that's, again, trying to give them some guidance is all I'm trying to do is to give them, once we get this done, then we'll, we'll, we'll put this on, on, a, on as a credit, as a document, and then they'll have what we're looking for, and then they'll be able to work off of that, and they'll just have to let us know what they can and can't. So seven to seven, half a day on Sunday. Yeah. We settle yeah. that. That's what we'd be kind of about. about we'd be expecting. Huh? I about forty hours roughly. Yeah, but okay, a little more. All right, it's at this time, then we've kind of covered just some of the very basic stuff. And again, this is just nothing no more than a framework. This is something for us to start from. And I'm sure once this is put together and once we get the response back from the providers, then I'm sort of certainly uh, there'll be another step that we'll have to go through. And that's when staff really is the pressure, you might say, will be there to them. And to actually see how all this can be accomplished and then be accomplished so within the framework of the ordinance that we currently have, under the framework of the current contract that we have, and at what point do we all of a sudden have a contract uh, that has amended, been amended so much that it really doesn't have a lot of backbone in it, and then we'll have to make the decision along with some discussions about how we want to proceed with the contract is do we want to sit down and renegotiate the entire document. We may get to that. I, I'm thinking personally that's more long term. Um, again, I'd like to get something and have it in place so we can move along March the 1st. If we can have a plan, which I'm really I'm kind of doubtful because we've just got so much that we've got to get done between now and, and certainly staff as well, between now and July 1, it's going to be really, really tough to say that we will have a plan and have it ironed out and it in good shape, I think, right now. So we may be looking at another date to push it further back. So, we're looking at this being short term, maybe short term. Short term could be, that, that, that is really just a fix until we can get to a solution to where 
we can then sit down and make decisions about the current contract that we now have. That short term could be anything from now, as I said, from now to July 1. It could be anything from now to July 1 of 2016, July 1 of 2017. It could be anything until we get there. But I think that there's also uh, going to be some, there's some interest in really looking at the contract as it's written right now. It, it, it may be beneficial to both sides to take a serious look at that. And so I think that that's going to give us the opportunity, or I believe that that's going to give us the opportunity to do that. that I think one of the questions uh, on the questionnaire was, do we want to do one-year renewals as well? So that would kind of help us accomplish it. That's right. I mean, that's something that we'll have to, you know, again, that's part of that process or part of that uh, where we will be going with it and considering between March 1. And that's going to determine the short term. If that can get done by June 30th, then we'll have something in place July 1. Great. If it doesn't, then we're going to have to put another date out there. And I know we all hope that it really lasts because I, I, I guess I understand the, the part of the question asked Commissioner Harris because I, I know the time is it, it, fine. July, our budget kick, new budget kicks in. We want to um, have whatever we can do by July 1. Um, and then we got the issue of uh, just working out the mechanics of the uh, agreement because the, the one we're under right now even states about uh, recyclables, get 50% of that. And of course, we found out how to recycle markets. <coughs> we might even be able to toss that out there in this, in this time as a concession or something to help negotiate. Who knows? But yeah, I think right now the short term really is all we can really say. All we're trying to get to right now is, is make some amendments so we can move forward with something uh, that will fit the March 1st time frame. <clears throat> and, and then certainly when we get there, we're not done with trash. We've still got to work out the way we think it needs to look and then get to a point where we can go from there. So that's kind of... That's kind of just, you're, you're, when you ask me what my definition of short term is, that's really it. It is not a fix. Um, I don't want to put, and I'm concerned about putting a July 1, 2015 date on it because I know what staff's got to do, number one, between now and March, just to kind of work through something like this. Plus, we're moving into our budget time. We're going to have a tremendous load as far as commissioners staff and we just may be asking to do too much to try to do it in the next basically five months. May just be more to get a cost. So there's no need to setting that goal that we don't feel like we can actually do. And I would say that I think the cost is going to play a big part in if we even get a deal now. Because uh, like I said, if it's too far out there, yep. well, we got a that debt we got a contract right now and we we'll let that ride out of as long as they can. That's exactly right. Um, yeah, we're going to have to make those decisions for that part. Of it. But we did, we got to get to a point where we know what we want, know what we'd like to do, give that to them, and let's get a number back and then see what what that rate quote you might say would be to do this. And then, just like Mr. Marshall said, you know, if if it works for the commission and it works for the provider then we can move forward. If it doesn't work for either one of them, we're gonna to have to talk about those particular things that don't work. And then if that doesn't work, we still have a contract at $12.80 for the next three years. That's where, that's where we're at. Um, my hopes are is that we can move beyond that and, and get this resolved. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity not only from the standpoint of the commission, but we have an opportunity as well for the provider. And so uh, I, believe, I believe we can get there, and uh, I think we can get there really in a timely manner that would be beneficial to everybody, but number one, again, to the citizens of Lounge County, we'll be able to get a better service with better choices.
anything else, another piece of the puzzle that you might have some interest in that you might want to add? That you just had not thought about? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just still concerned about that legal document that we have, and I wish we could somehow really prevent that. When, when they pick up all kinds items for free and, and Harry gets them too, I, I just think that the people that's putting out there, they don't have no service. And they may not get any service even when we get, get done with this. Well, my experience has shown that there are some folks out there that uh, they can live next door to a collection center and they still have rather throw it in the woods. Oh, uh, it's sad, but that's just the way it is. You know. So we, you know, I do, Mr. Marshall, agree that I would, I, I would like to see some way that we could address issues such as and be able to find some funding that would allow us to address litter control education, litter control in this county, uh, because we have, we, not just Lowndes County, but anywhere that you go anymore, it, it is a problem. Trash is a problem. It's along our streets and on our byways, and it doesn't look good for this community when we've got folks coming in. I think it's 10 to 15 tons that we're having to report. I look at those public work reports, and you can see the tonnage, and it's been a lot of it. It has. But anyway, that's, a, that's, that's discussion again as we talk about. But right now, uh, if, if y'all feel like we've got your concerns addressed, then We'll move forward with that. What direction? I think at this time we're going to take the, the, the items that we have, put those ad items in the form of a letter form uh, to our current provider to be able to get, get a quote for a price the concession 